So Tottenham look to put Saturday's thrashing away at Leicester City behind them, but have been hit with an injury crisis with Benten Kerr ruled out for the season. That's a huge blow, I'm sorry. On top of injuries to Cessignon, Busuma and Loris, Spurs boss Conti says it's time for other midfield players to step up now. Well, first of all, after that performance last week, he's gone over to you, lads, with them comments. You, you crack under pressure, so over to you, lads. You know, you can't get any worse than you were last week, so let's go to Milan and stand up and play like you can. He's right what he's saying about Skip. You know, he's got you go you qualify, finish fourth, try everything you get to get in the Champions League, and you get there and you've got to put two twenty year olds in the middle of midfield because you've got a couple of injuries. What would happen if Kane got injured? Who did they put in? They got I mean Richarlison can go in there, but he's not Kane. Um the squad's not he's more or less saying my squad is not good enough to compete at this level. You need to give me some players. Mm. So is that passing it on to the owner of the football club? Yeah, he's passing it on <laughs> to the football, the owners, about playing two 20-year-olds. And he's also passing it on to the players tonight, saying, on you go, lads, I'll leave it with you. Mm. What about Dino, because I've not got you tomorrow, have I? What about Dortmund, Chelsea and Barcelona, Man United? Dortmund, Chelsea, I, I hear a lot of good things about Chelsea against West Ham, the way they moved the ball. They should have taken the chances, their domination, they should have won the game. A young side as well. And then, of course, United in great form go to the new Camp. Well, Chelsea, uh, Graham Potter's just got to keep getting results while he's sieving through these players. I mean, they've. I think he started 67 different players, whereas Arsenal, top of the league, like 20-odd. Arsenal, hardly any changes. That tells you why they're doing so well. But um, he signed some good players, and I think Graham Potter next season might be the one for him. They've, they've, they've got that many good players on the pitch; they can beat anyone on the night. Okay, let me take a quick call. Um, let me. I tell you what. Let me go in Norway now. And Alex, a regular caller, a Tottenham fan. Alex, good morning. Morning, Alex. All right, Alan. All right, Dana. How you doing? All right. Good, mate. Yeah, thank you. What, what would you like to say, Alex? Well, I'm not looking forward to tonight's game for a start. I mean, we've gone for it before, really. And as, as Spurs fans, we like um, have this kind of um, anxiety around football matches sometimes. And it's another one tonight, you know. It's but I, but I think it's because the anxiety is built up around the style of football that we're being served with, and um, and it's not changing. And I think um, Chunk, as you call him. He's been on questioning Conte's tactics, and and it's and it's it's old school, and we and we're looking at now where we've had Harry Redknapp come in as manager, and and vibrant attacking football, and then Pochettino, and all the recruitment based around Tottenham has been based on that style of play. The guy called Stephen Itchin has been responsible for recruitment, and some of that has been questionable as well. Mm. But now we've got a new sports director in Petrucci and we've had Briose and the Wolves manager and now Conte and I want Conte to go. I want him out. I mean, we've had enough of it. Let's build for the future. Look what at what about Poch coming back then? Would you welcome that for next season? I don't think Poch for us is a long-term vision. It's going back to, you know, it's like going out on a date with your ex because you're not happy with your new missus, you know. It's it, it's not going to work, is it? It's it's a short-term solution just to make the fans happy. And um I mean, you can look at the way the club's being run for one thing, but and and the owners, maybe they need to go as well, but it'd be quite I mean, it'd be a big uproar if you get rid of owners and manager at the same time, but maybe that's what's required. Alex, it doesn't look like he's going to change his tactics, right? And, it, and he always plays this system. And if you go back to the team that Chelsea, that he had at Chelsea when they won the league, he had Costa, Pedro and Hazard, his front three. Kante and, and Matic sat in front of a back five, which was Aspilicueta, David Luiz, Cahill, Alonso left wing back, William right wing back. So is he saying to the board, this system works, give me the players to fit into it, or... Have you have you got to get rid of the manager? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, they've gone out now and bought this Porro. I mean, you saw what he was good for against Leicester. I mean, bless him, throwing him in there. It's, and it's not easy Premier League, and uh, and any team can turn you over, especially away from home. And I agree that you know the the, the signings. I mean, Ben Tucker was like a 
kind of like a gamble sign, signing. He was young. He'd only played a few a few games for for Juventus. He's not your Matic or your Conte, is he? And this is what we're left with now tonight. We've got to have two kids out there who are going to go to the San Siro and good luck, you know, it's like, and he's not really giving them much backing, is he? He's sort of like saying, oh, it's probably going to go wrong because they haven't got enough experience. And no, they haven't signed the right players. You're totally right. They haven't signed the right players. We've got Perisic, he's the only one with experience, but he's he's close to needing a Zimmer frame soon, you know. It's like, I mean, it's like, come on. And that's where the ownership comes into it, doesn't it, Dino? You know how it all works in football. Well, I think Kulicesi's a good signing. I think Richarlison's a good signing. Benteke's a good signing. I think them three uh, are decent. I don't think he signed Spencer. The, uh, Spence, sorry, the, the right wing back. Who's, uh, um, I think the board signed him. Because Emerson Royal has been that bad at times. You know, he had to put Spence in, but he never... So I think some of the signings he's made are good, but um, L- Lungley's not good enough, not so good. Romero's a good signing. Um, I think if they give him some more money, he'll get some top players in. I'm just scared here, though, that we up Milan too much tonight. You know, they're, they're, they're not the same side they used to be all those years ago. You heard Harry Redknapp on earlier, some of the players they had. They're nothing like that now, so we shouldn't just dismiss Tottenham's chances tonight, should we? No, they got Giroud playing up front, and so what's the first thing that comes into your head? Stop crosses coming in the box. Mm. And mark him. Mark him touch tight in the box. Because yeah. he's brilliant at getting on the end of the crosses. He can't run. So yeah. you can play a high line, but stop crosses coming in. I didn't like what Conte said, but... If Tottenham go there and perform, he might say, well, that's what they needed, a little kick up the backside. You well, know, yeah, you try anything. Don't question my attitude. Don't question can I handle pressure or not. I, I think the timing's wrong, but if they get a result tonight, Conte's done his job. Well, they got beat 4-1 last week, Al. Oh, battered. So he can say whatever he likes. He yeah. can't get any worse. OK, Tottenham fans, you worry about tonight. Uh, we, we'll, we'll still get time for a couple of calls. Our last caller, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, from Norway, I think Chris wants to come on. He's a Tottenham fan as well. I think he disagrees. Chris, a very good morning. Chris, what's your point? Morning, Chris. Good morning. Good morning, all. Lovely to speak to you. Long, long time listener. Great to be on. I Thank totally you. Disagree. I totally disagree with the last caller. Yeah. I think we, we've got to have a reality check as Spurs fans. Um, there have been some good signings. Kulisewski, Benton, Kerr, Perisic has been good. Poro's had one game. How is that caller saying he's rubbish? I think the sack the board stuff is rubbish. Conte's our best bet. We've got to take a reality check. You've got to be careful what you wish for. Look at our stadium. Look at our training ground. OK, it's not worked perfectly. We're not in a bad state. We're, we're in the Champions League. We're top five. All the panic talk is absolute rubbish. If people don't like it like the last caller, don't go. I, I'm happy. I, I want it to be better. It's not perfect. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not the misery. Of, as honestly, last call, the man, you want to cry. Well, who, Chris, who's out there? If Conte decides, no, I'm going back to Italy, is Poch, you know, is Poch yeah. the next one, or are you not sure about no, Poch? Why? The, the, the one bit I agree with the last call, and about, I liked his analogy of going back to your ex girlfriend. I loved Poch. He's got a place in our heart forever. But he couldn't change things. He didn't quite do it at PSG. It would all go wrong. I mean, if we go and sack Conte, who's a guaranteed winner, what are we going to have? We'll have the lovely Ryan Mason back. We'll have Tim Sherwood back. Who else are we going to get? Graham Potter when he gets the Chelsea sack. You know what? Conte is a real winner. What's the alternative? We've got to be realistic. We can't compete with the likes of United, City. We've got to buy. We've got to invest in players like Kulusevski and Ben Tukur. Um, uh, that's the way ahead. Let's not let's not be in fantasy world that there's this this owner with a pot of money and this yeah. super manager. All right, You're Chris. Right, Alan, uh, Chris, enjoy tonight. Listen, we don't know. <laughs> As I said earlier, you know Tottenham could go there and get a result. We don't know if they, you know, you, you, with the quality they have up front. You know, if they get half a chance, uh, you know. And I'm, I'll say again, Milan. I've got the utmost respect. The San Siro. I've never played at Dino. One of the big uh, European grounds that I haven't played, but um, you know, they, they're they're not as good now. And um, Spurs, it wouldn't surprise me if Spurs got something. A draw would be great. Bring them back. Do, do you London know the funniest stadium. thing about the San Siro? Aston Villa into Milan, right in the cup. So we yeah. get there, and it's torrential rain. Ron Atkinson's the manager, and he loves it, doesn't he? So it's torrential rain, and the and the groundsman the night before the groundsman said you can't train on the pitch. Mm. It's waterlogged. You can't go on there. Ron's devastated. 
he wants to go on the San Siro, doesn't he? So he can have a kick. So he can have cross a few balls in the box. So he's got Jim Walker, the physio. Jim, get out on the right wing. He's gone out in the puddles. The, f- the groundsman's ch- running down the track going, you get off the pitch. He's going, come on, Jim, whip some crosses in for me. I'm at the San Siro. I'm not going home without playing. <laughs> and John Fashion, who's doing karate kicks in the centre circle. Oh, dear. He's giving it all the... So uh, we got beat 1-0. But, yeah. yeah, we got through. Yeah. Beat him at home at Villa well, Park. Well, she's taught him to do that. Home yeah. and away, knock out, bang, see you later. Uh, I just hope they, they turn up and, and, you know, and I hope... That you know they get a chance, they can get some service to Song and to Kane. You know that's the key. I think the way they play is gradually seeing them off. Son, Kane, and Kulicheski is grinding mm. them down. Three players who are not getting enough of the ball. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from six a.m. on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.